Right. How many people do you usually have? At least three. Oh, you're only missing one. Day. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like three. <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, let's go. We're going to try this again. Hopefully this will work out a little better. Uh, so we have our first uh, view, and it has its controller, uh, the code that controls the view. And we want to add another screen and be able to jump to that screen. So we first uh, start out by adding a view controller to our um, uh, storyboard. So we can drag this out on the screen and it makes a new view for us. If you double click on this, this enlarges it so you can move around all your storyboards. Uh, I mean all your screens on the storyboard. The storyboard's the whole thing. And this little arrow on the left means this is the first screen or the first controller that's going to show up after the launch screen, of course. Uh, and then you can draw lines from different controls to go to different other views. So we want to connect this one to this button that I have, log this data. So I'm going to right click on the button, log this data, and it drag it over to my view controller and it says this is an action segue. What do you want to do when somebody clicks this button? So uh, almost always we're going to say show. That means show the other page. Um, some of these others are, are like pop-up windows and things like that. So, so now we have a, a segue and we can move this around and it follows us. So we can position these wherever we want. But this is now uh, a, a code connection between this button and this view controller. But if we look at, if we click on the Segway itself, this little arrow, uh, we, and we look at the properties, we need to give it an identifier. So some name that we can understand in the code, this doesn't show to the user at all, but I'm gonna call it switch to log. All right. And then uh, now if they click on this button, it will go to this view page. But now we need to attach code to this so that we can control all the elements on here. Because if, if we have things like a label um, over here, come on. Oh, why can't I drag onto it? You have to zoom in. I have to zoom in, that's right. That kills me every time. So we put a, a label in here, like this is our uh, uh, weight log. Um, we'll call it BMI weight log. And we can style it and do all that good stuff with it, center it, and make it bigger. And we can put buttons on all of this, but we have to have code to be able to control this screen. So we have to add a new uh, piece of code. And we do that through uh, file, new, file. And we want a, uh, a iOS source, a Cocoa Touch class. So this is the class that's going to be associated with this view. So we say next and give it a name. And this is the name of the class, not the file. So it will create the file for us. So I'm going to call it weight log. And um, it's going to be a UI view controller because that's what, uh, we can't see it. That's what uh, our view controllers are subclassed from. And we want it in the language of Swift, and we don't want to create an XIB file. Um, an XIB file is is the view um, layout if it had its own separate view. But our view is now controlled in the main storyboard, so we don't need a separate file for that. 
Then it asks us where we want to save it, and it's going to be inside of our project. We'll create it, and it puts it over here. And notice how it added the name view controller to the end of it. So I just called it wait log. It added the view controller uh, dot swift at the end. So this is my new file. Wait log view controller inherits from it's a subclass of the UI view controller and it created some code for us. And this is the code I was trying to get yesterday. So I just my mind blanked. So this is uh, this is going to help us transfer from one view controller to the next. All right. So the only other thing we need to do to really hook this up is to select our weight log controller. I mean, our weight log view, and tell it. Um, Sorry. Where did it go? There it is. Okay. So we select our view in the storyboard and we want to associate a class with that. So the the center button here is the identity inspector. And the class that we want is one of these that might be already created, but ours is way at the bottom called wait log view controller. So we already created that class. We now have to tell this storyboard layout that it's connected to this wait log class. So now it has uh, the controller can go back and forth and we can associate things with that page. So let's see, um, the next thing I have, so any questions on that, I guess? I changed my little scale yesterday. Um, so let's look at this, uh, but, this buttons control. So if we look at that, that is over here in my view controller dot swift, and it was a function that we called something switch to logger here we go so this is what I wrote yesterday and it's a little hard to see let me close this give us more room close off that's why we keep closing all those things and opening them up again need more room that's where you need like five monitors around you to collect everything <laughs> so yeah, yeah, all of those, that would be great. So we have this button, this is uh, connected, we connected this yesterday. Um, this switch to logger is just a method that we called it. And then we're going to call this perform segue with identifier. And the identifier was what we named this segue itself. So if I click on the segue arrow um, and come over to... Where did it where did it go? Are you kidding me? There we go. We go to it's strange that it doesn't show up sometimes. You really have to click on it a few times. Um, the identifier I called it switch to log. So this string here has to match this switch to log. That's the identifier. That's the segue that we're going to run, which takes us to the view, uh, our BMI logger view. All right. So let's see if that actually works. I think I have one more thing to do, but let's run it. Let's see if we get a nice crash. Come on. So th there's our launch screen. That was our launch screen. We've got our 
data here, and if I click the log this data button, it switches over to our new view BMI weight log. Beautiful, isn't that cool? Yay, success, I can't believe it. Pardon me? You don't see the button over here? Um, I don't know. Is it... Uh, did you disable it or something? see anything there's no um, um, how about this enable down here is that selected so if you click on the button from the storyboard. Does it show enabled here? It would still show, it just would be grayed out. It would be something you couldn't do, so. No? Valid thing, let's do that. So the issue we had was if this uh, this screen here, this view, doesn't always match the simulator. Um, so if you have a button down here at the bottom of the screen uh, and you think that's going to show up on the emulator, it doesn't seem to do that. So if, to show you that, we'll run it again, put the button at the bottom, and now you see we've lost all kinds of stuff down here we don't see it so let's uh, let's also I wanted to see this too if we scale it to 100% even then it doesn't show up which is strange so maybe we have our uh, screen wrong in portrait See, that should be regular height. That should fit everything. That's a, that's a, a six, a six or six plus. So anyway, it doesn't seem to match. So I moved my button up and my image down a little bit. So that shows the picture. All right, so any questions on that so far? So let's go and make the rest of our view. Uh, and this is, uh, if we set this to automatic, it changes the uh, code to whatever view I have selected over here. So if I select my main view, my view controller comes up. If I select my weight log, my weight log comes up. So that's all up here in this automatic. That's most of the time that works pretty well. All right, so we have a basic piece of code here. Uh, and we have our uh, on create or on load function here. And that's where we do some of the setup. But let's, let, let's design our page here and I want to have for mine I'm going to have some labels I'm going to have a, a couple of labels here and a couple I'm going to have a, a button 
does something. I'm going to have some text edit areas. Um, text fields. I call them different in Android, right? So I need a couple of these, so I'm going to copy and paste these. Uh, command C, Command V does the copying. So Command C, V, and then V again, and V again. So I've got four different labels, four different text boxes. And this label is going to be the BMI, and this label is going to be the weight, and this will be the date, and this will be the uh, time. So we'll move all of these over and relative to each other so they look nice. And make these uh, right justified so you can select all of them at the same time and do a right alignment uh, and then we might as well make these a little bigger so I can make my text bigger so I'm going to take them all the way to the screen make these larger text so 17 will make them like uh, 22 and then we have to make them a little taller So Apple likes you to, to work on your design first and get it all the way you want it and then work on the code behind it. They, they consider the design more important than the code, which that translates in their whole company. Uh, design is everything. Um, which they yeah, which is why they don't they don't care about the users, the the uh, programmers, the developers, obviously, because Xcode just sucks. It's just not very good. So let's uh, let's make this button uh, save wait entry, and we'll make this guy bigger too. We can like some nice big buttons. And I have to make it wider. Might as well make it go all the way across and a little taller. All right, so now we have a button. Um, we're going to need another button to get back to our BMI calculator. So let's add another button. Un, drag that. Actually, I could have just copied and pasted it again. And this is uh, and we'll make that the same. Twenty-two. Make it wider. I go all the way to the edge so that it that actually helps it center. I don't know why I just do that. Um, so now I've got two buttons, some text input fields, a big label on the top, um, which let's make the color just to show we can change some colors. Uh, make it some bright blue or something like that. And if we click on this little gray text. This brings up a font. Uh, we can change the font style itself. Um, we can make it bold or heavy. So it's a nice big, big thing. Make it even bigger. Now I don't know why they don't make the box scale with the font, but they don't. All right, so that looks pretty good. And 
even before we connect it up, I like to run it just to make sure we haven't caused any problems. Uh, it should everything should work for us fine. Log this data, nice and big. Let's scale that back down again. And we click on log this data, it switches to our BMI weight log, and we've got our text areas here, etc. And none of these buttons actually do anything yet, so we haven't hooked them up. All right, so uh, the next thing is to hook these up so that we can control these, these fields. And we do that with dragging and dropping or creating uh, connections between the two. So we likely will never change these labels, so we don't need an outlet for these. But we are wanting to read the data from here, so we need to have some uh, outlets for that. And we'll call this the BMI uh, text and change their mind to be weak now. So let's do all four of these. Uh, wait, text, or didn't I? I was doing it differently, wasn't I? Text, wait, and let's kill this one. And fix the outlet for this guy so that we kill it as well and recreate it. And it is a text BMI. All right, so that's two. We need the, the date. And we'll call it a date. I don't know what text date and time, text time. Okay, so I've got four outlets so I can read the data. Um, I need a function, so I need an action to happen when this button happens. So I'm gonna come over here and create an action instead of an outlet. And we'll call it save uh, data. And we want it to be a button and a touch up inside and connect. So now we have a function associated with that. Um, and so we can test to see that it's calling. We can do uh, something like saving log data. All right, and then our BMI calculator we'll deal with later that to go backwards, but um, now we should be able to read this information and uh, capture it. So let's just make sure we can read it. Let's, uh, let's get the, let's just print some of the data and how, and we can use, we should be able to use interpolation with that slash parentheses, and then a text weight, and then a, with some commas between them, a text date, and finally the text time. And you need the dot text for the Yes. <laughs> I was just seeing if you were awake there. That's good. <laughs> there we go. So I did, s and I'm missing my closing quote. There we go. So it likes it. So let's see if all of that works. So let's run it again. And really, this. Once, once you get some of the things down, the actual creation of new screens is pretty quick. It's a lot faster than the Android side. A lot less code that I have to write. 
So I can say log this data and I can put in some stuff here and say save weight entry and there we go. We got all of that data printed out to the screen. Beautifully. Eh? So we can use that to save to our file later. All right, any questions on that? Nope, nothing, huh? It's cold. Hmm? Let's continue. All right, so I like, again, I, like, I don't like a white background and white buttons, so I'm gonna make the color of this uh, background Yeah. I've got a guy back there doing it, so. Of course, trying to find it again. We want to have it uh, some light blue or something like that. Just like our last one, right? Should be the same. And let's make uh, these a little bigger. Oh, they don't let you do a all at the same time, really? I chose the, the same blue that I had over here in my first screen. All right. So um, the BMI and the weight are all coming, could all come from this screen, right? So it'd be nice if I could transfer data from one view to the next. So they have a way of doing that in this segue code. And they, they, gave, you, they gave us this code, if we look at the, the new code that we created down here, this navigation, uh, this was put in as a comment and it says, in a storyboard, you'll often want to do a little preparation before navigation, before you're moving from one view to the next. And so what we can do is override a function called prepare for segue, and we can do some stuff in this code uh, to pass some data at that point. All right, so, but we want this in the prior controller. We want this code over here. So I'm gonna copy this. Ah that automatic sometimes gets you. I'm gonna copy this and put it into my uh, first pages view controller. And we will uncomment out the edges. And so this function will get called uh, whenever you're trying to switch to a new one. So as soon as we do this, uh, ah, where'd it go? Here, it's right there in front of me. This, uh, as soon as we do this self-perform segue with identifier, this does the switch, and we are override this. So as soon as this happens, this code will get called, and we can do stuff in there to send data to the next view. All right, so what we need are some data uh, values in the, in the view that we're gonna call. So let's create some, some uh, variables over here that we're going to call Something like um, some values like <coughs> sorry uh, I'm gonna call them uh, incoming just so I know it's coming from another view so I'm gonna have a string 
that will initialize to nothing, and we need an incoming wait, which is of type string, which equals nothing. Uh, and we're going to use those values uh, to, to capture the incoming data. And then once we get those, we can set the text values uh, for these label or these text fields to that data coming in. So on the view controller side, the, the one calling this, we can now set those variables from an, another controller, which is really interesting. A lot easier than Android. Um, let's do just a print to show you that it's inside of this code, uh, inside the segue prepare, repartee. And then we can create, uh, we have to get a pointer to the weight log controller. So we create a, a constant because we're not going to change it. And I'm going to call it weight log controller. And we get it from the segue object that comes, that gets passed into my method here. We say look up in the segue and find the destination controller. Um, and I want to cast that. And so we use this as field as a uh, as a weight log view controller. All right. Oh, why doesn't it like that? Oh, it's because we haven't used it yet. All right. So that does a a, a casting, uh, more or less of this destination controller as a weight log view controller. Now that we have a weight log view controller, we can uh, set stuff in it. We can get at the variables that I just set up incoming BMI and and the incoming weight. And where do I get the BMI from? So the BMI is being stored in this field, this status label, which we had called uh, label BMI. So we'll call this label, what is, why am I not getting telesensors? Wasn't that label all spelled out, not telling It's not even, no. should give me some, so makes me think. Something else is wrong up here. Label BMI. And we want to look at the text and we want to force it from being an optional. Why doesn't it like that?
All right. Well, that was stupid. Um, weight log view controller is a class name. My variable name is just weight log controller. So it's the variable. It's a variable naming problem. Oh my gosh, that was painful. So that should be right. Not unwrapped. So let's put our exclamation point. That will unwrap whatever's in the text weight. So what this does is it sets these instance variables from my weight log class uh, as the weight log controller is being created. All right, so when it's being created, it's calling this weight view did load, and we can do other stuff in here. And so typically what we're gonna do is set the weight uh, dot text to be equal the incoming weight and the text BMI dot text is going to be the incoming um, uh, BMI, right? So these these are set by this prepare for segue, and so when this loads up, we're going to take those incoming variables and set them to the text fields on the on the control. So let's see that run. So we have to actually have some calculations here. So let's do some calculations and log this data. And we should get 175 and 2187 when we switch over. Look at that. Is that beautiful? Ta-da! Yay! So we were able to fill in data from the other view. And isn't that great? It's beautiful, man. Beautiful. Any questions on that? I think that's a lot easier to switch data across. I don't know. It just seems more reasonable. I'm basically setting setting the variables directly in the class, which just that makes a lot more programming sense anyway to me, rather than storing it in this bundle extra and passing it. It's just a little nicer. All right, so that's enough for today. Any questions on that?